Thank you so much for staying tuned to Africa Discourse. I am. Uh, I'll just wish you just heard our discussions before the camera <laughs> came to me. You would have been like, really? Is this what, what is going on globally? But anyway, not to worry. We have all the media to really talk about this. Today is all about coronavirus in Africa. And of course, some African countries conducting elections in the means of this pandemic. You have Burundi, you have Malawi, you have Guinea-Bissau. You just name it. Even the uh, uh, Cameroonian, how will I put it now? A kind of... Um, I'm looking for the right word now to use a decree, yes, that March 22nd the elections must hold in the Anglophone regions and all that. And people are like asking, are Africans not aware of this pandemic? Are they not aware of what is happening globally? Are they not aware of some of these things going on in some parts of Africa, even as a continent? Why are they paying deaf ears to it? Even in Guinea-Bissau, I think they have six cases now, if not more. And they're talking about the spirit election, the rerun election, and you just name it. All right, is this clash between soldiers and protesters in Burundi, in Malawi? I mean, what in the world is going on? How did some of these African nations are where they are today? God forbid the pandemic get to that sport or that point what do you think will be the colossal effect anyway my analyst will be the one to throw more light on this with me here in the studio i have a, a clergyman yeah he's a political analyst i also like to call him yeah i'm gonna put it on an activist both local and international politics is well grounded join me to welcome reverend humphrey arega reverend namaste <laughs> no more handshake <laughs> good afternoon <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome all right well you've seen the other guests a very vibrant youth when you talk about education he's at the forefront he's a political analyst but local and all the Texas were grounded. Just to knock on God sent or Saigi. God sent. No more handshake. Yes. Yeah. It's my pleasure. Okay. Here we are, my friend. The world is battling against this pandemic. The strongest of all nations in the globe. They are almost succumbing, but they're trying to, you know, beat this virus coronavirus and here in some parts of africa we have records also our country is not left out of persons being infected because they contracted this virus and we have countries like guinea bissau burundi malawi they don't have a record right now in malawi talking about election protesting going out there to vote does this really make sense to you reverend well uh in the world we are in today, nothing makes sense. <laughs> that very but when we come to Africa, I, I have two thoughts about what we're doing right now. Uh, whatever happens, life goes on. There must be life. And life does not go in a vacuum. Two is the fact that the African continents do not even have what it takes to contain, to mitigate whatever is happening. Because our health system is, 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 local, is flat. And the, the resource that we ought to have to make things work are being preferred and siphoned by politicians who happen to be, who happen to have access to the world. We're talking about people having elections. There are two things that happen in Africa. One is power, the other one is money. And once these two are absent, everything goes. African leaders, most of them you have mentioned, Guinea-Bissau, well, they are wanting to hold on to power, by all means. Whether the environment is safe or not, to them it's better because the less people are out, the less people, the, the more they are able to manipulate whatever they want to. So it, one would have expected that people would talk about how do we safeguard our citizens, that have 
no mitigating factor when if it comes. Floods have taken over some parts of, of, our, of African countries. There's no remedy to it. In some part of East Africa, it was locust. They didn't have any remedy for it. So when you now think about people engaging in politics at this point in time, then you have to ask yourself a question. Do we really reason backwards as people talk about, or we are reasoning with the rest of the world? Everybody in the world is postponing a lot of things. The FIFA has postponed its, its World Cup match. Mm. We have seen in, in the whole of Europe and, and America, every sport is grounded, every garden is grounded, everything is grounded. Even those countries in the Western country where, where there have been no reported cases, some of them have closed their borders, there's a safeguard mechanism. Africa has a, had a window of opportunity to make sure it doesn't come. But we do nothing just like we normally do, and hold our hands, and at the end of the day, we are waiting for donor countries to come and help us. You know, and that's the problem. So it, it is not surprising to me that some African leaders are still holding elections. Elections can wait. You see, you need to elect, people need to, it's you need human beings to elect you. You need to rule up with rule to rule with human beings. And you need to talk about it. so if the people for whom you say you seek power have no value to you, then it shows us that the only reason why you're in, in politics is to have access to the wealth of that nation and, and take it away without any concern for anybody. All right. Uh, taking it away without a concern for anybody because right now Malawi, Burundi, Guinea Bissau, and of course the decree also in Cameroon is like the world is just thinking about Africa. Are these guys okay with what we are going through here, even in their continent? They are still conducting, challenging, contesting election. Well, in, in due course of the clip, you get to see a kind of, you know, uh, a fracas between the security personnel and protesters. Not too worried as we're talking, they'll roll the clips over for you to really know what is happening in these African countries <sighs> in the time of this pandemic. God sent. Uh, uh... Let me pick, in, pick it up from where Reverend stopped. You see, again, over the years, the African lead, leaders have put themselves in a situation where there is so much distrust from the citizenry. You know, just when this, um, at the early stage of this coronavirus in Nigeria, I had a lot of people expressing doubt of even the genuity of the case. And at a public at a public meeting that I had, I said I wouldn't blame them because over the years our leaders have built so much distrust in the system that it is easy for us to suspect anything, even when there could be an iota of truth in it. We are tempted to want to suspect that there is politics, and it's just a game of interest. And again, if you are to go back to look at history, you will discover that the suspicion of the people are always justifiable. You know, if you look at the, the case we are trying to analyze now, there is a global epidemic. Every other nation is trying to safeguard. Even for some few countries that this issue have not got into, they are already putting measures in place. We are aware of some countries that are already locking down their borders, shutting down their borders, just to prevent or to wait for the eventuality of any outbreak of coronavirus, then why you have some African nations that are going to the pools? Now, you know, we start to ask ourselves again, it's an issue of interest. Who are the leaders really interested in? Is it the power? Is it the money? Or is it the people? You know, and that is what breaks our heart. Because at the end of the day, you know, I was reading the interview by um, Conde. You know, he was talking about the measure put in place, social distances, in an election. This is not digital election. No. This is not electronic election. <laughs> this is a fiscal election. People are going to line up. And you are saying that all measures have been put in place. There is no need to be afraid. And some cases have already been recorded in Guinea-Bissau. You know, it shows us the quality of the leaders we have, where their interest lies. It's not really about the people. It's about power. And African leaders, it's sad to say, but it's the reality. They are opportunists. 
every incident that happened they look for how to take it to their own advantage even when some few persons are crying out that with the outbreak of the coronavirus with couple with security issues there could be a foul play in the election and they are paying their fears to it you know so it is a game of interest and again we are saying that these elections are not really about the people but it's about the power it's about some certain kind of presidency that want to hold on to power and let me also bring this to your attention that another area to look at is the fact that at the end of the day who are you going to govern should this epidemic spread in such countries but don't also forget that these leaders at the top always have a way of safeguarding themselves so the only reason why a leader will say let the election go on is because he knows that no matter how critical the situation may be you know their presidential lodge and whatever is going to be most likely out of the epidemic just recently we have some formulation going on already in government houses and all over now who are those that are left to survive by themselves or with their feet the commoners you know so you start asking yourself do the leadership in africa really care about the people they govern or about themselves because no matter how bad things turn out to be in guinea bissau mali or malawi the president and his aide and what have you are going to be secured because there are already fumigation there are already chemicals that can combat this virus or that can kill this virus and it's already at their back and call they're already receiving delivery of it so the attitude is such that we don't really care if some few lives are gone but as long as i hold on to the power and i use this as an opportunity to perpetuate my idea agenda that is all that matters all right. and that is exactly where we begin we have to begin to hold our leaders accountable okay i will come back to you god said now from the statements he made alpha conde talked about after all we are practicing safe distances in the election uh, is that not a point for the man go ahead go out with your election just maintain safe distancing and people are like asking can social distance be conducted or uh, uh, be uh, how will i put it now uh observed in an electioneering situation you see when people make statements like you say you have to ask yourself a question are these people talking to people with reasoning or they just think they're talking to people who don't reason yeah. look at america for instance the, Dem the democrats are going to hold uh, an election for the american yeah yeah because people were afraid anybody could be affected africa is not even as we don't even have the facilities that those ones have for emergency and all of them but yet they have to cancel the elections and somebody is telling us in africa that if i go to the social distance are we not seeing crowd just now in the south it was a distance <laughs> That's, that's their own distance. I want people to just show us that clip if there is no distance in that clip. I mean, it's... So, again, we have to ask ourselves where and how does the common man in Africa seem not to even have fear for his own life? If a man says, Go and die, we look at why not you ask yourself, Why should I go and die? Why would they not stay? So we are not going anywhere, we are sitting at home. No voting. Yeah. If you want yeah. to vote, you can vote. vote yourself. But we will not vote. Okay. Hmm. The citizens can do that. But citizens are not. And these are the things we keep talking about. Look at, I was watching on television. Look at Venezuela. Look at, they are fumigating the streets. The streets everywhere. <laughs> making sure that which of the countries, the only country I've seen in Africa that's ever been doing anything at all is Ghana. That was fumigating the streets. But also look at the facilities that were used. Look at, why in Ghana they were using hands? Or in Venezuela and other other countries, they were using yeah, vehicles, machines. Yeah. Machines. Why is it difficult for us to do that for our citizens, to save our citizens? Now you are even telling citizens, oh, our country, let us know, okay, don't go anywhere. How have you mitigated the effect for the citizens? You, you, you see that some of these are issues. In other countries, they are giving social benefits to keep the people at home because you cannot tell a man not to go and look for what to eat. The man must survive. Uh. Africans are not taking care of their citizens by providing. I don't know talking about the medicine. Recently, I was reading that a man who tested positive was thrown away from loot because they said there's no bed. 
Then tell me where do you want him to go? You have sent him not just to go and try, but to go and affect other people. <laughs> These are issues. Whereas if it was in America, then that man would be arrested, detained, and taken to somewhere else. So that it doesn't affect somebody else. Somebody else. So you see, there is that disconnect between the people and the leadership of the African continent as to why leadership is essential. You know, today people in Africa do not really take up essence, and that's why there is a lot of violence everywhere. You just want to take up because they want something to be done, and you're not doing it. And what they see, you're not doing. You are trying to. They try as much as well. One of the countries, the opposition leader was uh, was adopted. Yeah. You know, yeah, someone, the man is adopted because they say, look, you have some money, we we'll take it from you. Mm. He, they will not kill him, you know, but they are going to extract, just like you have these armed robbers and all of them, all these uh, kidnappers. They extract money from you because the thing that you have, they don't have. But when you have a country who has interests of its citizens, the citizens will obey. When you say stay at home, they stay at home because they know that something is going to happen to them. They are not going to be left on their own. Right. So, so we, the Africans need to rethink. I mean, to me, periods like this are periods for us to rethink. Yeah. Okay. As citizens, we must begin to ask ourselves, what type of leadership do we need? Okay. Because it's only the citizens that can change the type and bring the type of leadership that they need. They need. All and right. Citizens must be ready to ask themselves questions and ask themselves, what exactly and how do they to make sure that such things happen all right well according to records right now malawi is even though that is the reason why they are jubilating dancing talking about elections and all that guinea bissau uh, are six and still counting what about burundi malawi they have their own records but they are still there you know jostling for power you use a phrase you talked about trust and of course, the belief system of some African leaders and their followers. Is it what is at play right now in these countries? Yes. Let, let, me, let me borrow the word that Reverend used behind camera. Mm. That in Africa, we don't learn anything from history. From history. Mm. You know, we just keep on recycling the whole issue. Mm. This is not the first time we are having a global epidemic. Mm. This one may be so special because of the deadly nature of it but there have been threats of these kind of issues in the past like we just came out from the ebola saga and in fact we were still combating the lassa rat issue mm -hmm. the lassa fever issue particularly in this country before the outbreak of the coronavirus now you know i i am opportune to have one or two persons that work in the health sectors some of them as medical scientists when you see what is happening is so pathetic it's so disheartening you know I, I was speaking with one of my you know um mentee in the health sector the other day he said even the team for the last south fever was disbanded just before this uh, coronavirus came on board and last South fever have taken more lives in nigeria as of now mm. than even the coronavirus now you see the problem with our systems now, the thing that we assemble to combat the Lassa fever, phone was not released. The only thing they keep on hearing as rumor is that they have released phone somewhere, 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 but it doesn't get down. In fact, I, I wanted to make a little trouble and I said, ah, give me some of these kits that they give you, I'm sure you have a surplus. He said, we're even looking for. We that are working as head personnel, we are so exposed to risk and you are told it's your job, you must do it. Get out there and do it. Now, what I'm saying is, is this a country? It's sad to say, oh, we are just like somebody says it is a zoo. You know, I know that may be a little bit harsh, but no, 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 the point is, is yes, yes, but, it's right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, but what I meant to say by that is we don't seem to be thinking. Our health system in Africa still remains one of the worst globally. Our system, Africa still remains one of the most hazardous continents to put to bed. I mean, giving birth is one of the areas in mercy in that mercy have long advanced above so giving birth in you know europe countries and some other developed countries is just like the norm is no there's no much of threat but in date just few months ago before now to say that africa still remain one of the most hazardous nations to put to bed then what we have seen over the years are leaders 
that have reliable doctors that have hospitals that they patronize outside the country at the break of any headache or at the feeling of any headache or cold their private jet they are gone you know that's the reason why again if we are to look at the epidemic in some way it seems as if god is bringing judgment because now where are you going to fly to okay like someone sent something to me on my whatsapp page which i think has gone around he said let these so-called people be admitted in the local hospital that they are built what do we learn now coronavirus is on but what lessons are we going to bring out of it how much allocation gets to our health system because let me tell you something Wilson. the leadership of africa being who we are this epidemic is seen as an opportunity to make some persons richer some persons are going to be richer as a result of this epidemic more money is a lot of uh, philanthropists are donating money to the system now at the end of the day there will be no accountability some persons are sitting somewhere in fact i have some secret in, uh, information people are being changed from offices right now as i speak in the health sectors just because a, this person wants to put his person there because of the money that is being released you know that's the reason why i said when i say zoo i'm talking about do we just throw away our thinking to the bush and begin to gamble with human life because the leaders up there know that they will always find their way now as rock have been formulated and i'm sure that it's going around government houses there's a formulation and the rest are sure that any kind of uh, rescue or recipe or medicine that comes out is going to get to them first but at the end of the day the commoners are the receiving end and that's the reason why we must take the responsibility to decide who governs us okay gone are those days where we put somebody there that does not know anything about social security stay at home stay at home what is the package of our welfare okay. i was saying something on the public show the other day yeah. If you decide to stay at home and make a farm, you are not even sure that you go to farm and return back. Okay. Uh, so uh, where, where are we going to survive from? Uh, all right. Now, you just hold on. Uh, I, I will come back to you because we want to go for a break. Mind you, uh, some great countries, US, France, all those uh, big countries, you know, economically speaking, are beginning to remove their citizens from African countries. Okay. Yes. They've come with their planes. Move right now. Is that a message the world is trying to send to Africa as a continent that maybe just maybe danger is looming somehow? We'll be right back after this break for my guests to throw more analysis on this particular discourse. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is Africa Discuss. Mind your social media platform, they are there. You can go to the YouTube and see the discussion. If you're just joining us to see the beginning, what led to where we are right now, and go to we are on channel 107 or Star Time channel 130. And of course, you can tweet at us on uh, ITV Radio NG or on my own personal Twitter handle out on marshall wilson follow us also on instagram we are there bringing up pictures facts to get you informed about what is happening in around the society within and outside nigeria outside africa that is our sole responsibility it's all about the coronavirus in africa and of course some african countries conducting elections in the period of this pandemic now reverend some countries they have come to some african countries to evacuate their citizens is this one of the reasons as in this continent they are not serious because you can't be talking about conducting elections in presence of this pandemic how do you view that their actions knowing for a country like spain or france italy us they have worse cases right now but africa was just starting yet they're coming to the South Africa to evacuate their citizens. What's behind this rationale? Well, first of all, that shows to you that the leadership of those countries have concern for their citizens anywhere in the world. When it needs to happen, they want to make sure they are safe. The case specifically said that if in the next two months that Africa does not do anything, it will be more horrible in the African continent than whatever is happening in Europe. And so they already are, the Europeans already are aware. That's why they are trying to evacuate their cities because they know the Africans are not ready. They don't have the health facilities. 
You are going to borrow from those who are trying to save their own country. Mm -hmm. You think they will give it to you mm -hmm. before saving their country? It's not. The other day we had the uh, uh, plain loads of uh, uh, materials from. Have you seen where the things have gone to? The materials they brought to Nigeria, for instance. Mm -hmm. You can't. Nobody is tracing it. The media will not be allowed to have a trace and a focus as to where these things are done. So the citizens do not even know where the things are. And these are some of the things. So they, they, they have seen that it is not possible for them to lead their citizens to a place where the leadership is not ready. So they are going to take them away. They are facilities. Two days ago, a state in New York, for instance, had a problem and they appeared to the federal and they brought a ship from the Army Corps, not civilian, Army Corps. And you know, armies are more trained in all these Western countries in every area of life. They brought a ship to them that contains how many thousands of bells. And this has the man, how long are you going to say, oh, so long as we're no longer needed, needed. So they are staying there. They are going to evacuate citizens who are sick, not of coronavirus, so that they can give space to those to be treated because the beds are overwhelmed. That's what we call practical measures. How many facilities in, uh, in Africa have been upgraded? You can't hear it. We, don't, we, we, see, we are also a country that do not believe in the release of facts and figures because that will hurt the government and its practitioners for not doing what they should do. So you cannot, when they tell you there are only two people in the place, you know that there are more than 100. Because they will not let you know why is it difficult for you to allow the press. The other day, we were looking at, they buy some press men from Etria as well. Those who may feel they're critical to the government. That's, that's not how life goes. Let, you see, you are government of the people for the people. Let the people know. Every day you see press men harassing the president of America, harassing the government to come and address, to come and talk to them. Let them know what the situation is. They ask a question. In Africa, you can ask any, any president a question. You can't ask any government. You can't even ask any local government chairman a question. The next thing, you are, you, are, you, are, you are showing to prison or something else. So these are some of the things. Because we do not have access to facts, you can't go to the hospital now with your camera. They will destroy it. Because they feel you are going to expose yeah. the inadequacies. And there are people who would have. Who would have you see, when we don't know your problem, nobody can help you. So Africans do not even expose themselves to their problem. You look at that, even America is seeking for it. Uh, Cuba has to send some doctors to Russia, to Italy, to help. These are nations that already have uh, very good facilities, but they are overstretched. They have to ask for how many doctors do we have in Nigeria? How many health personnel do we have in Nigeria? Who have we asked for help? Some of the thing because it's not something you can do on your own. It's, not, it's a global issue. So you need to have that. Once they see that you are, you are having this kind of thing, people can trust you. So the, 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 the Europeans who are no longer trust, they are no longer trusting this, the country. They are taking away their citizens. So they can go and give them medical help, American facilities that they need to, to keep their life. All right, God so say it is something that should be a wake up call for Africans. Okay. They say, look, if we cannot even be trusted, if everybody, everybody knows that Africa is not is the least affected by this virus, mm. and if people can be moving from the least to the highest, mm. then you should know that you are you are not even counted as anything safety. God sends I, I, I just African continent. Uh, <laughs> are we toast because of what is happening right now? <laughs> Evacuation because Reverend has spoken at length. That is all a bad trust issue. We are not forthcoming. We don't have records. We don't have database. Uh, these countries, they are scared of this continent. Even as it stands today, we are the least infected. But as I are seeing what we are not seeing. There is a common saying that if you think you can deceive yourself, you can't deceive the world. You know, if we stay in Africa and we keep on saying uh, media houses shut up, don't report it as it is, don't go beyond this, let's bring uh, media laws, you know, social media laws to, to try to curb every, every, um, uh, you know, every, whole, every opportunity where people will have to analyze the credibility of your government you cannot deceive the world 
you see, we, we have to know this because in, in the world globally, when some of these and develop an advanced country looks at us, they just laugh at us. You know, for a country as of today to have the worst case scenario, to be evacuating our people from another country that have a less case scenario, he tells us something that even in the global world, the leadership of the global world does not believe in the competence or the will without of the African leaders to sincerely combat the situation. Should it go get out of hand? So they are trying to project and prepare for what is ahead. So that is the reason why I said that whatever you don't prepare for, you pay for it. You may not pay for it today, you pay for it tomorrow. It is not obvious before the world. Our years of deceit, our years of playing games, our years of being more consigned about my own share of the cake. You know, just a few days ago it was said, we are still busy about taking delivery of our cars, exotic cars, in the midst of an epidemic. You know, the, the only tactics we have now is don't share it yet. People are going to talk. But we are already taking delivery. We are ready to renovate whatever house of assembly you have. He doesn't care who dies. But the only thing God has done for us is that where these people always run to is also being affected. So now, they can't run away. They have to stay here. And I know that African leadership are so gullible that they will soon start building special isolation centers for themselves. That is how, that is how terrible we are in Africa. You know, currently we are receiving a lot of donations. We are again going back to the begging bowl. And I've always said that the begging bowl is not a critical pathway to economic liberation. We are going back to the begging bowl. And the people we want to beg from have their own issues. And many of the kits or whatever we are going to ask them to give to us, they are going to be used kits, whatever they have used before, they are going to be handing it over to us. You know, it is just as a result of this epidemic that we are now talking about how to produce our own, uh, is it sanitizer, fix masks. We don't even produce fix masks because our economy is highly dependent on importation. Everything is imported into the country or quite a number of things are imported. You see, so what is tearing at us is beyond the coronavirus, you know, epidemic. It is what is tearing at us is the massive failure of leadership in the whole Africa continent and the need for us to learn our lessons as a result of this outbreak and begin to decide because the people had the power begin to decide the quality of the leaders that governs us because we believe that someday the whole issue of the coronavirus will be history but what is ahead of us are we continue are we going to continue to have leaders that empower other nations economy healthcare system are we going to have a situation let me just give you one case scenario presently presently if you give a lot of nigeria health workers opportunity to exodus to us or canada or uk to help in fact they won't think it twice and, and this is something that i've faced up with i faced up with some medical persons yesterday about this you know, currently it is said that U.S. have opened their website mm. to see if you want to work. And a lot of them are applying. Because nobody has confidence in the system. The system is so porous. Right. That is no confidence in the system. So okay. for nations to start evacuating their people, it shows that we have a future danger that is looming. And it is better we have leaders that are able to talk to themselves and use more proactive measure and be sincere in the disbursement of funds. This is no time to think of what can I get from it. It's time to think about safety first. All right. Now, in these countries, Reverend, does it mean that the, the Ministry of Health, they've been sidelined and politicians, they've hijacked the process because they are insisting that they're following the WHO, uh, how will I put it now, guidelines in conducting the elections, forget about the health issues, really want to get our leaders health in this country is conducting its elections have they been listened to have they been consulted if they have been consulted the advice were they taken by these countries you, you first of all have to ask yourself questions whether the professionals have a voice in africa the professionals have no voice in africa everything is politicized if you go to the health ministry who has who holds it the minister for health Sometimes they're not, they're not. Figure it. 
professionals in it. They may have, some of them may have had a, a, maybe doctors or maybe they, are, they have their doctorate degree in medicine or other things. But how long have they practiced? For how long? Some of them have not practiced medicine for a long time. You know? And then sometimes you, you just look at, even if as they, 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 they put themselves more as politicians first and as professionals. That's why you find there's a, always a problem between the medical health workers and the ministry because they're not listening to each other. Okay? So even if they give advice, the, the politicians will not, will not accept. The, the, the president will not take that advice and does whatever he wants to do. So in the allocation of resources, that's the same thing. They allocate resources to the things that are beneficial to them. That's why in most African countries, where you have big allocations are road construction. Because that's where you can take your kickback, you know, or supply of medical equipment. It's only the training of the officers to administer that you have them. Because you cannot take 10% from training the staff, you know. But in, do, in, in delivery of drugs and other uh, medical equipment, it's, it's a contract work. And that's why we also have inferior material supplied to us. Because people go say, look, just give us anything, you know. And nobody is, there's no standard. You, although you have standard organization of Nigeria. But go and look at most of the things. They don't have the standard that you find in, in Europe or in America. You buy two th things from these two different countries. Yeah. And you will see the big difference between the two. You know, you're asking yourself, well, so at what standard are we using? We are all human beings that have the same blood and the same mind all over the world. Doesn't matter where you are. So if we're talking about WHO as a world standard, tell me how the world standard that America is using is the same with the one that Africa is using. Why is there a difference? It's because you can interpret it. According to your the WHO will not come to tell you this is what I said about you. They have given you guidelines. Yeah. It's just like what uh, the um, electoral agency will tell us. Yeah. The law, this is what the law says about election, but this yeah. is how we interpret it. Yeah. And how they interpret it is what you see. You know, we do, you and I have not seen WHO uh, uh, roadmap. Yeah. They will say this one day. What, who has shown us? They will not show it to you because by the time the people, the citizens are enlightened, to talk about what the issue is, the government knows their own affairs are not being tackled on some things. So they keep it, the, the documents are there. And most of the time, I also have problems with some of the head workers because they have also helped yeah. in making sure that things don't work. Because some of them have colluded with politicians to acquire inferior materials. And sometimes the materials that are given, some of them take it away, go and sell it. And there's nothing in the hospital. So there is this until and unless our hearts are, 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 are breathed to let us think as humans with God's intention in our hearts to feel another man's spots to know that whatever I'm doing to somebody else yeah. I'm also affecting myself you know let's until we come to that humanity of human, human action we may not get anywhere truth mm -hmm. will not be there honesty will not be there integrity will not be there mm -hmm. and these are things we have had donations yeah. We had, during the flood disaster, for instance, a lot of people donated to Nigeria to see. Where is it? How many houses were built for people who were destroyed? How many communities were rehabilitated? The, now people are donating money again. Like you said earlier, you find, go and look at, at the end of the day, try to use your touch light to find who were the contractors that supplied those materials. Wow. <laughs> Good questions. <laughs> who are the contractors yes, that supply the materials? Things. Okay. All right. Now, Africa as a continent, they have a union. You know, okay, we have a union, the African Union. Can't they sanction these countries for conducting elections during this pandemic? God says. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? That is like a rhetorical question because yeah, you know I in Africa. Loud. African Union. Every, Don't they have the power? Everybody is the lord of his ring. Mm -hmm. That is how it plays out. You know and. You know, we we selfishly use the part of the constitution that talks about territorial integrity, that even the AU have its limitation. Even the UN cannot even impose on a certain African country to say it must be so, not to talk of the AU. You know, so we need to begin to take away trying to politicize the whole system and begin to realize that African actually is a blessed continent. Many of these countries that are having 
this heartbreak of coronavirus. At the end of the day, you discover that their system will be saved by an African person. An African person that probably went there, school there. You know, you, when the results are brought at the indices, you discover that the assistance will be saved. And it is not as if we don't have people that are competent. But the system is so bad that everybody thinks of himself. L let me just borrow a leaf. There's something Reverend tried to point out, which I want to pick, out, pick, pick on. For example, are you aware of the current rivalry between the medical doctors and med lab scientists, nurses? You know, what does it call for? The fight and the battle have been on for years. In fact, they have even taken themselves to court. The date is still on. In fact, one of the protests that the uh, med lab scientists had uh, against the training that was done in Lagos was that it was nurses that was trained. Instead of them, they are the ones that take the samples. But you trained another set of people for the job. Okay? And when they go to the feed, they are asked to go and take the samples. The nurses that are trained are withdrawing themselves back for fear. You see, you can see that the whole system is, is, is crazy. And we need, that's the reason why I said we have to go back to the drawing board. We have to tell ourselves some hard truths. We are either ready to face the problem or we will pay for it. And that is exactly where we are going to. Except there is the sincerity in the system, there is the political will, and the politicians have to give room, like Reverend was saying, for these health workers to take their decisions. And we have to begin to look at how do we appoint these people in the first place to head these different power status. Until we begin to wipe away sentiment and say, oh, you are my person, or you helped me win an election. And look at competence, credibility. We are going to continue to suffer. All these are combinations for the reason why we are where we are and the reason why the developed world cannot have confidence in our system because history has it that every such opportunity i said before i said african leaders seems to be like opportunist people that take advantage of any issue to just help themselves upgrade themselves so are we going to see a new health system after this epidemic are we going to see sanity restored to our health system are we going to see the health workers being well taken care of. Now, in the midst of this epidemic, you have put people on like a double-day job. Okay? You can't even provide one square meal for them. Now, you are telling them, give me your best. How will they give you their best? Some of the reports reaching us suggest that when these people even go out to collect samples, they are so hasty about it. They are not even collecting accurate samples because there is even no motivation. And yet, money has been released, money has been donated. You see, so the point is, we have to begin to face the realities. Until we are ready to call a spade a spade, we are going to be into a very deep ditch, and we are going, like we are always used to, praying to God. You know, we are a very religious society. <laughs> and asking God to help us. I think we should be in the first of, of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God has helped us with this song now. The rain is here. <laughs> the rain is here. <laughs> Let me hang on there for Reverend. Reverend, <laughs> I, I don't know the religious <laughs> aspects of it, and of course the AU aspect. Please take it up on that because we are about to commence our decent. See, the, yeah. the point here is that, like you said, every multilateral organization has its limitations. Mm -hmm. And you know that, as as a nation, you can pull yourself out of AU if you see that interfering. It's 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 made by consensus. It's not by direct uh, directive. So, but do we need somebody to tell you as a president that the head of your country, of your citizen, is more important than winning an election? We don't need to be told. You should be able to know that. That even if it's one day you have ruled and the people have seen what you have done, it's better that we have ruled for 100 years and people are cursing you. Most of our leaders, you can't see how citizens curse them. That's not the kind of leadership we talk about. Yeah, we also talk about God is very uh, favorably disposed to humanity because He created us. But God also will not do for us what He has asked us to do. That's why He gave us brain. That's why He gave us materials to use. So if you refuse to use it, you, you pay the consequences for that. You know, we'll pray, but prayer does not uh, exclude you from facing the facts and realities of life. Faith acknowledges situations but transcends over it, yeah. mm. you know. 
He said, God, help me. And God will see. He said, God said, I will bless the labors of your hand, which means you must be working for God to bless that for you. You cannot be wishing. God doesn't bless wishes. You see? You can't be dreaming every night and you refuse to wake up and you feel that God will bless you. It doesn't. You know? That's why you need to do what needs to be done. God gives wisdom and order to people to produce some things to mitigate these facts. If you do not go and assess it, that becomes your problem. You know, so let us not let us not use religion as keep telling people. Don't tell people I'm praying. Even Jesus, when he was here, wasn't praying every day. He prays, he go to work. So you must pray and do your work. But do it. If they give you money to buy materials, go and buy the materials, materials. and buy quality and materials. stop extorting uh, uh, the, the nation. You buy go and buy inferior materials. I was telling the people that. Some of the mad guys you use, only God can help some of us because you don't even know the source, you don't even know where things are. <laughs> some of the hand sanitizers, you see some of them are smelly of alcohol, uh, overdose, yeah. Yeah, a lot of things. People are using and exploiting, just like people will use uh, sawdust as a uh, bomb mm. it's, it's some of them, so people are human beings in their wickedness. That's why I said God, is, uh, God intervenes, but we need to allow God to intervene by our own attitude and character. Mm -hmm. And that's why the nation's leadership must have a character that people can trust, right. that people can rely upon. When he says this, he knows it is that. Mm. When you cannot have an hospital where you cannot attend your own country, but you live, mm. how can you not test money to go to that hospital? <laughs> okay, well, uh, <laughs> one minute is to summarize this point. Mind you, it's all about elections in some African countries, in measures of the country, it's Guinea Bissau. Uh, Burundi, uh, Malawi, and of course a decree by uh, Paul B in Cameroon for election to take place in the Agbophone region, all in the heat of the global epidemic. You can call it a pandemic if you want to call it, because that is what is happening. It cuts across border and the world is shaking, almost brought down to its knees. So one minute each, gentlemen, one minute each advice to african countries god sent one let, let me quickly say that this is the coronavirus outbreak is a test of the quality of our health system mm. we should begin to invest so much into the health system with with a heart of sincerity and credibility All and right. professionalism too All right. then also is also a test of the quality of people that we call our leaders mm. then finally beside praying i will advise the average uh, citizen of the whole Africa continent to adhere to the precautionary measures mm. because if you think you're going to put your faith in your leaders in your leaders you might be disappointed All right so, thank you thank you so so much God sense Reverend one yeah, minute uh, first of all I have said that what has happened now shows to humanity that man has a limit yeah. you are there are places your money can't do anything it fails everything fails yeah we are seeing in government now. What powers are panicking? Whether that's them at fear. Mm. So only God yeah. has the uttermost, uppermost hand in it. Mm. But then you should also have that character of truth and trustworthiness in you mm. in preparing. Because there's nothing that happens by chance. Yeah. You know? And if you did not prepare for it sincerely, to me, let Nigeria see this as a wake up call mm. to say, let us begin to redo our head. You don't need gigantic buildings. You need facilities that are functional right. and that are able to help the people. Okay. Health services. Right. And then train the personnel so that they can use it effectively. And the people will, be, will, will give you all the support that you need. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Reverend. And of course, our God sense. I appreciate your wonderful analysis. You've heard them. Let's see if these countries will listen to the voice of reason. Yes, one other country, but you can call them. Uh, a divergent country or dissident if you want to call them that despite the word pandemic they are testing interballistic missile <laughs> north korea mm. that'll be for tomorrow god willing on international forum don't forget to adhere to the safety precautionary measures put in place for your own health so that we not contract this dreaded novel coronavirus bye for now